Okay, for the last few videos, we've looked at transaction logs, and now let's just kind of tick off the advantages of these transaction logs and how they're going to help you. Number one, you have a more efficient data flow. Your disk isn't in constant contention. Your data is flowing first into the transaction log, then into the database, and it's going in at intervals called checkpoints, and I haven't mentioned those, but from time to time, the, the transaction log is sitting there collecting data, and it executes what's called a checkpoint. And when a checkpoint happens, the transaction log basically scans through the entries in the transaction log, and it looks for committed transactions. And when a committed transaction is found, it's written into the database. Then uncommitted transactions are not written in, and committed transactions are then considered inactive because they've already been written into the database, so they're flagged as inactive. Transactions that are still not completed are considered active transactions. So this makes for a more efficient data flow. Then we have a data backup and recovery tool. It's just fantastic as it turns out that transaction log in effect becomes a tape recorder of all the data that has been changed or added since our last backup because when we did our last backup, we cleaned out the transaction log to control the size of it, and so we have now taken care of that, and should we have a failure, say midweek, we can simply replay what was in the transaction log through the course of the week and be back to um, working. Now, not only can we replay it, but we can replay it to a point in time. Let's say that our database goes down about 2.30 one afternoon, and users report that beginning at about 2.15, it started getting real slow, and it began to, you know, kind of wobble. Well, we can do a point in time recovery on our transaction logs up to about 2.10, and we can assume that something happened some transaction came through that kind of fouled everything up, and we can avoid that. It also could have been an attack. Someone could have done something malicious to our database. So by recovering up to 2.10, we might can avoid the attack that happened at 2.15. So we can do point-in-time recoveries off transaction logs. Transaction management. The transaction log is going to sit and pair up our begin and end transactions or our commits and rollbacks, I should say, to make sure that transactions have completed before they make it into the database. And so transactions are managed there. Also data management. Since everything goes into the transaction log before it goes into the database, we can use that as a data management tool. By watching the growth of our transaction log, we know what normal activity is. good example is you know that if your transactions log grow by probably 8 megabytes a day. If suddenly it grows 14 megabytes, something happened, right? If it's not growing by that much, again, something may be happening. So you can use this as a data management tool. You can also watch the um, steady, consistent growth of that transaction log and use that to forecast the, the growth of your database. So all of these things come into play. The transaction log is your friend. We will talk about it a lot more when we get the database backup and recovery. So for now, just be aware of what the transaction log does, how it does what it does, where it should be, and this will really start to come into play when we start to talk about how data gets stored and how we do backups and restores.